Hello, and welcome to How I Did It, the video series where I sit down in front of a mic and I turn it on and I tell you how I did things. Uh, this episode is part of a series of very special episodes uh, about the development of my most recent visual novel, uh, Menix. Uh, Menix was developed for NaNoWriMo, so it was made in a month because that's how long NaNoWriMo is. It's the month of March. I didn't start it till about a weekend because I didn't think I was actually going to do it. That I was like, well, you know what? Let's just go for it. Ended up crunching the last week. That's how it goes down. Uh, this video in particular will talk about the writing and some of like, the pre-development stuff. So Menix is the sequel, a direct sequel to a game I made last year called Naxus. It takes the same two characters, Yisa and Ari, uh, in the next kind of stage of their journey of, you know, what uh, their life is going to be. Naxus and Menix are grounded in classical Greek mythology. Uh, Naxus was conceived because I wanted to do something Greek mythology themed because I was submitting it for a Greek mythology jam. It was a myth it was mytholo jams. It didn't have to necessarily have to be Greek, but I was like, let's do it. Um, and I wanted to do something that was based on a Greek myth that had a good ending. And that's very, very difficult <laughs> because, man, those Greeks love their tragedies. It's very difficult. Uh, I ended up uh, centering the story of Naxus around the story of Dionysus and Ariadne. And I could go into that and how long that story is and how Ariadne got totally screwed over by Theseus, but that is for a different kind of conversation that I could have. Uh, so I built the characters of Yisa around the character, around Dionysus, the god Dionysus, and Ari is a representation of the character Ariadne. And at the end of the game, they, um get together, like, that way that game is structured, you only have one ending, and they're together. And so Menix is the follow-up. What happens after? I knew immediately, immediately after fin finishing Naxus, that if I did another game in the same series, it was going to be about the Island of the Lotus Eaters from the Odyssey, because I freaking love it, because it's ridiculous, and it's like this one paragraph section of this huge epic poem that has always just entranced me. And so that is, you know, the theme. So uh, that's where the title Menix comes from. It is the classic Greek name for the port town on the island of Gerba. Uh, that's off the northern coast of Tunisia, where scholars think the island of the Lotus Eaters might have been, like, based on, like, where it's influenced by. So it's an actual island. A lot of stuff from classic Greek mythology is based on actual islands. Obviously, it's all... Um, you know, uh, elaborate upon and stuff. And so that was my base book. That's the title comes from. And if I do any more for the series, which I kind of do, like they're kind of fun to do. And I want to do more with these two characters. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see, you're going to see a game called Lesbos. You're going to see a game called, um, uh, Crete. You're going to see a game called, uh, Mykonos. It's going to be great. I'm so excited. So because I was, Coming back to these characters, I really wanted to do something that was more explorative of their relationship. You know, we play these visual novels and the romance ends and you never really know what happens after. So this being a sequel that covers the end of the romance, you know, covers what happens after the post, the post romance, this is going to be, um fun, you know, in a way, to kind of, like, explore, okay, how does their relationship change? Where do they go from here? Because uh, we never, you don't get to do that very often. It was also very important to me to actually develop out their characters. You know, the first game was very focused on getting to know each other and these weird things and Greek tragedy, and so the second game, I was like, now you're going to get to know these people. And so that was my primary focus. What is the relationship between Yisa and Ari like what kind of troubles are they going to get into? You know, Yisa, um, which if you stick around for the art video, you will see is a monster. She's a, she's a minotaur, which has a conversation with somebody. She's not the minotaur. She's a minotaur. Don't at me. I'm pedantic. I know how it works. Um, and so yeah, so Yisa's a monster. Uh, she used to have a the form factor of a woman. Um, at some point in her life, but, you know, through various machinations and magic and good stuff, she became a bull-headed creature, a cow-headed creature. 
And so I thought it would be a lot of fun to at least explore that a little bit, how these two deal with that, you know? I still wanted to kind of um, make sure I was keeping with the uh, stylistic theme of the previous of this kind of very classical language and very uh, separate from the story, like you're looking over it, you're seeing it happen. And so trying to get all that to mesh together was the biggest writing challenge overall for the story. So the overall conflict of the story is that Ari was going to consume a drug or she was going to perceive things in a certain way and they were going to have to deal with the effects. And I had initially had the idea of, okay, Ari and Issa have a problem or maybe it's just Ari. You know, I kind of play with that. I decide on just Ari. In the end, so you kind of got a foil. You know, Ari is inebriated or she's high or she's affected and Issa isn't and you get a sort of um, uh, control for what their relationship is supposed to be like. And at first, I was going to have it where they arrive on the island and Ari sees the priestess and however she perceives the priestess, which was going to be what the player picked, um, oh, the priestess wears this and has the skin color or whatever, was going to be a direct effect on what would happen with Ari later, like or how the drug would affect her. Um, because it would be a reflection of her inner eye or something. And it didn't quite play the way I wanted it to when I kind of, like, processed it out. And so that's why I d decided on doing something a little more direct. And that is where the idea of picking ingredients that you put in a cup came from. I wanted that to be the primary choice point. Because that would determine, okay, how does the rest of the story go? I had played with the idea of, okay, once you pick how the story is going to go, then you make some more choices along the way, maybe as Issa or as a, a third you know, kind of deific figure, and it would give like a good or a bad version. And I was like, oh, I don't know. That feels like a lot more extra work that I don't know if it really adds to the story or really does what I'm trying to do. Like, Naxus only had one ending. And it told the story I wanted it to tell. You had, you know, four places where you could die before you got to that ending. Well, I didn't feel the need to have necessarily a good and a bad ending. And it's already going to be nine permutations. And in some of those permutations, stuff was going to go bad. Um, so having the addition of a good ending or a bad ending just didn't feel necessary. Um, so to get one, to get on a permutation, to get on a route, to get on a, a story ending... There were two ingredient slots and then three ingredients. And you could pick, um, you can pick th one of three flower colors, white, pink, or blue, and one of three additional ingredients, uh, honeycomb, mushroom, and herb. And at first, I already knew what three scenes I wanted to do for sure. I was like, okay, I want this one to happen, I want this one to happen, this one to happen. How do I make this work? And then... I knew I had to fill out six more. And I did this by setting up a grid. And each of the flower colors represented within each other or the unknown. Like how Ari was, what Ari, who Ari was going to interact with. And then the three ingredients were um, compulsions, hallucinations, and delusions. Uh, so I took the scenes that I knew I already wanted to do and I made them sort of fit into the box. Like, oh, I need this one thing I want to do. Okay, that scene's going to be a, um, a compulsion within. Does that work? I'll make it work. And then for the scenes I didn't know what I wanted to do with, I used those, um, grid ideas to sort of fill out, okay, what the, what could that scene be? Like, one of the scenes that I had to, like, figure out was... What is within paranoia going to be? Okay, I think, or within delusion going to be? I think one of my initial categories is paranoia. So I was like, okay, what's, um, you know, yeah, well, what's within delusion going to be? Um, and I, I figured out a thing. Um, I won't tell you which one it is. Um, and so that helped me fill out the different vignettes and fill out the different of the nine permutations. So I definitely want them to be short. The original game, Naxus, is like 5,000 words. And this one came out to 11,000 words. 
And I wanted them to be short, only be a thousand words at most, because I wanted you to sort of just get a snapshot of this part of their relationship, this aspect that they're struggling with. And the idea was, oh, you'd play all nine of them, and that would give you a more holistic view of how they function as a couple. And I definitely wanted to make sure that there were a combination of good endings and bad endings. Like, so I have some really, really bad endings. I have two really, really bad endings. I have one kind of fun ending. Uh, and then everything else is kind of on a sliding scale of, oh, this one's kind of bad. Oh, this one's kind of good. Oh, this one's kind of in the middle. Because I liked the idea that despite me having these kind of Greek tragedy themes, that it's not all bad, that, you know, you can have these good endings and it needs to go forward. And I also want to be able to do more with the series later. So I need to have like a canon ending, so to speak, where they survive and they're good and they can keep moving. And I also just don't, don't, you know, want to all their lives to be misery and suffering. Just a little bit of misery and suffering. And I tried to cover... Um, a couple different aspects of their relationship in these sort of delusional episodes that Ari have. You know, I tried to talk about things like their physical intimacy. I tried to talk about things like um, jealousy and uh, wishing you could be something different for your partner and trying to cover... Uh, the feelings that Ari is tamping down of these kind of PTSD situations from things that happened at other points in her life as she's not dealing with them and they're resurfacing in these awful ways and just dealing with them, learning how to be a couple that's just kind of traveling around and they don't know what they're doing and they don't exactly have good reference points. And, you know, how are they going to deal with them as adults and conversations a lot of conversations a lot of talking they talk a lot to each other which is what I wanted to do and uh, I'm really hoping that it kind of develops them more as characters because what I'd really like to do is do more with them I've sort of Naxus was the game where I played with concepts and this was the game where I played with character and I sort of fell in love with these characters working on this game and I want to do more with them because I love them so much now which I don't normally do that. Like, I kind of forget. Like, I, I, I fall in love with the characters I'm working on them, and then I kind of forget them as the game ends, um, as the project ends. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm done with those characters. They, I said their story, we're done. But these characters, I want to do more with them. I want them to travel around the whole ancient Greek world, having all these cool, awesome adventures, just these two girlfriends walking around having girlfriend adventures, and um, try to have some fun stories that are post-romance, that are after happily ever after and there's so much really cool stuff I want to deal with them because they've as characters have been through so much already kind of as my own backstory I definitely want to use Yisa as an exploration of womanhood and I want to use Ari as an exploration of of gender roles and stereotypes and I think they're gonna be fun and I really hope that people connect with them and that they're along for the ride. And that's all you can ever really hope for as a writer, that people enjoy what you do, see themselves in those characters, and want to know more and come along for the ride. So it's kind of a very, very brief overview of like the, my writing approach to Menix and what I was trying to do. Uh, I really hope you'll stick around for more videos about the game development process for this game. Uh, I'm gonna have a video about art, I'd like to do it about programming just to kind of give a very holistic approach to a game and what kind of goes into it for the research side and all that kind of good stuff. So thank you for joining me on this first of a few very special episodes of How I Did It, and I hope you will stick around.